it away. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee. This call is open to all community participants. Please abide by the antitrust regulations and be uh, respectful of the other contributors. We have very little on the agenda today. There is an update from the Iroha project. project. <clears throat> uh, when I looked about an hour ago, uh, only a few of us had reviewed the report. Um, go ahead though and uh, open it up for questions from TSC members uh, or seeking other sort of clarification on that report. Do we have a uh, participant from Iroha on the call? Hello, yes, uh, you do have um, me, uh, Andre, and uh, Igor seems to be here as well, and uh, Alish can also help answer questions. So we have uh, many people here attending, and we are ready to present the update and uh, answer your questions if you have any. Okay, great. So uh, you had listed in the report uh, an issue getting through the, the DCO. Uh, but it looks from the, the comments yet today that that is resolved. Oh, sorry, uh, I did not. Um, the thing is that uh, we resolved the DCO issue like a day ago. So we created this report before it was uh, resolved. And then we added the information that it was resolved. But unfortunately, I missed the part that it was still an issue here in the report. I'm sorry, I did not delete that one. But it's resolved now, yes. Yeah, no, no apologies needed. Um, that's great that it's resolved. Okay. Uh, questions from anyone else? Hi, this is Arno. So I have a kind of a general question about Hero. And I mean, when Hero got started, Makoto told us that one of the motivations was actually to be using C because he thought there was a much broader set of potential contributors writing C++ and that would be a big advantage over say, you know, uh, Fabric for instance, which was based in Go. I wonder, you know, if you guys have an opinion at this point, I'm not completely convinced that this was, you know, this actually worked out so well from that point of view. And there may be other factors obviously that come into play that, but you know, I was wondering if you guys have any opinion about that. Yeah, it's maybe difficult, Alish here, it's maybe difficult to comment what was uh, at that point uh, reasonable or not reasonable from, you know, Makoto's point of view, but uh, I see the possibility of being the only platform in C++ to get, uh, you know, contributors and uh, uh, build a community that is skillful in C++ and doesn't have any other platform to collaborate this. If you're asking if this is happening at the moment, the answer is maybe not to the level that we would like to see it happening. Uh, the, I don't know what is the reason for that. Maybe people that are skillful in C++ are not looking into the blockchain at the moment uh, or they already switched to another language. So this is something that we probably should research uh, a little bit more, but we also discussed, I think, on one of the previous meetings that maybe some companies are waiting for the first release because otherwise it's difficult for them to justify the, you know, the efforts and the time contributing, uh, contributed to the, to the project. So we are also looking forward what will happen after the the first release if uh, some of the companies will jump on board and dedicate some resources. Not sure if this answers your question, but this is from my side. Maybe Andre, who is more active in development itself, uh, has an opinion on that. Um, uh, yeah, hello. I'm not sure I have any like, more comments regarding the language decision, but uh, well, from the performance perspective, it's uh, it has its own uh, potential benefits. Okay. 
I can maybe add another another comment. We are also working now with Polkadot, and we are building the uh, runtime environment uh, also in C++. So they also decided that C++ is an interesting addition to, to the choices that they already have. So now we are adding this to the Polkadot. Okay, thank you. I, I did. I did want to point out that uh, you know we had we you uh, the TSC had set you know you know kind of a mechanical stop against their hitting uh, Oroha hitting 1.0, which was it was dependent on the DCO conformance. And now that they have DCO conformance, you know, as of a few hours ago, uh, I mean they have officially hit uh, 1.0. So I would just like to say you know thank you for the Oroha team for working uh, closely with LFIT to uh, get the DCO conformance issue resolved and congratulations on hitting 1.0. Yes, congratulations. Yeah, congrats again. Thank congrats. you so much. Thank you. All right, uh, Arno, thanks for that question too. I think it's it's helpful if we start looking retrospectively in, in each of these projects for technical assumptions that we made up front and, and start to uh, you know, extract some of that that learning so that we evolve how we're approaching the projects. Um, you know, hey Dan, that brings up a really interesting set of questions we should plug into like our project readiness and, and our metrics, which is um, maybe some questions towards developers, new developers who join Hyperledger um, and uh, see if we can judge sort of like how high the bar is based on whatever language the project is based on. Um, be interesting to see if we could find some measurements that we could um, put into the dashboard that we can uh, look at in the future. Yeah, that could be interesting data for us. All right, well, we don't have uh, other um, previously scheduled agenda topics. I, I noted that uh, Vipin had already put together the identity update. Uh, it looked like some of us had had an opportunity to look through that. Vipin, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you would like to take questions today, we can do that. Otherwise, we can do that as scheduled next week. I can take questions. Great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, click that report back open on my end. Looks like about half of us have had a chance to take a look at that. Are there any questions from those who have? Yeah, Vipin. Um, and I know we've discussed this on the PSWG calls as well, and Chris has been involved in the discussions. Um, and maybe to sort of hijack your, your report, but um, one of the things Ryan and I are looking at um, and, and trying to lead is a discussion on how we maintain and increase participation in working group SIGs and, and projects in general. Um, and one of the things I think you've done that's great is you're off trying to run two meetings, um, basically the same meeting, but two different time slots in the same day to try to bring in people from all around the world. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I, you know, basically we've had problems with the uh, membership, uh, the participation in SIGs. Uh, there have been a lot of emails back and forth about the reasons for that. Uh, in particular, in identity working group case, I think it is because of the takeoff of Iroha, I mean, sorry, Indy and uh, the work in uh, the agents subgroup and the sovereign call and all that because they do deal with the identity topic but I think a crucial element is missing there which is the uh, uh, legacy systems uh, topic on identity and the bridges that can be built between the legacy systems and SSI which we have been always sort of pursuing uh, but uh, be that as it may in the sense that we are uh, seeing lesser participation. So my aim in creating the two time slots was to create one 
that is more friendly to the APAC region. Um, there are, you know, I, I have run now three, three days, uh, you know, three uh, calls with dual, uh, you know, with, with two time slots. But I noticed one strange thing that is the um, participation in the regular call increased. Uh, and the participation in the second call remains uh, low but steady, meaning there are people from Australia, Japan, and Hong Kong, and so on, uh, that call in, which who would not normally not have called in, but the numbers are low. Uh, so I've been trying to promote it on both India Community Working Group and on uh, China, TWG China, but I haven't seen any participation from uh, p participants there. Uh, what I'm wondering is, um, you know, how can we increase the participation and make uh, meaningful contributions to the Identity Working Group paper and uh, get it towards completion uh, with uh, increased participation from the APAC region. So this is the reason for my second call. Uh, and it has had limited success. And, you know, like I said, still only in the third, uh, third call. But I believe that we should uh, try to get more participation by, uh, by the Linux Foundation or some, uh, you know, the people there reaching out to the companies that are based primarily there in, uh, in the APAC region. Uh, and I'm also wondering whether, you know, we, we had for just in the last call, we had reps from Iroha and from um, IBM, uh, I mean, from uh, Hyperledger Fabric, uh, who might contribute uh, a little more into the paper. So this is, you know, my experience so far has been, it is uh, overall positive and I will continue this exercise. Um, Chris uh, says this is a sort of an Iron Man thing, you know, having two calls on the same agenda, same day. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's great. Thanks for the additional. One. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> I th I think you know it 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 kind of highlights though that um and, and you know to to a certain extent you know this is what Brian has been saying along but you know I think that you know just as we do with you know the um, the open source side of things I think especially when you're collaborating on a deliverable you know, then maybe a little bit more email back and forth and or, you know, discussion in the margin of a Google Doc or something like that is probably, you know, the way to do the collaboration. And then when you need to sort of get in and, and have a, a tighter discussion, maybe use that for a call. But um, I, 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 you know, I, I think that you know, calls can be useful, but by the same token, you know, and, you know, Mark, you know, we're struggling a little bit, you know, in the PWT, SWG to, you know, not lose, you know, participation as well. We're trying to figure out, you know, how best to sort of move forward, but, um, you uh, know, it could be just, you know, we need to find better ways of asynchronously working together. We do have uh, that facility in the document. In fact, uh, we have had a lot of comments in the document. In fact, we had uh, several contributions over the last um, couple of mm -hmm. uh, months in the document, some very interesting ones. Um, the other, the flip side to this uh, whole document thing is that We've had some rogue uh, deletions, which uh, I've not been able to pinpoint on any particular individual. 
Uh, maybe it is just a fat fingering thing. But uh, now I've just uh, locked it down for comp uh, only for comments and for suggestions, which then I will incorporate into the document. But maybe there is a way to have a biomedia or even use GitHub for this purpose. But um, um, the, we have had extensive comments on the document. Uh, in fact, if you, if you look at the document and look at the site, we have not been resolving many of them uh, as rapidly as we should because of the uh, participation uh, points. And there is also a debate about exactly what is the purpose of uh, the working group, right? This uh, document is one thing but to provide a forum for discussion about identity matters that are not only in uh, Hyperledger projects, but also from the outside, uh, the interesting aspects of it so that everybody can be uh, developers who are not identity specialists or people who are not identity specialists can uh, listen to those uh, presentations uh, and make adjustments in their uh, Outlook, plus the uh, we are sponsoring also the agent to agent protocol. In fact, we had an excellent presentation yesterday from uh, Daniel Hardman on agent to agent, which I which I haven't put in this uh, in this uh, update. But uh, you know, he he showed up on two occasions and spoke about this. So we have this. Think, what is the work product of the group? Yes, it should be this document, but also it should be, uh, you know, providing this forum for bridging the identity topic. I think, hey, uh, hey. I, I think Nathan's been trying to interject here for a while. Yeah, so uh, that's actually a good lead into my question, Vipin. The Identity Working Group has been a really good bridge to some of these communities outside of Hyperledger. Um, can you comment a little bit about um, how the, the partnership with the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance has worked with respect to identity, and also anything that you could say about the new DIF 2.0 kind of reorganization work that's going on over at the Decentralized Identity Foundation? Yeah, we had a demo of the uh, DIF uh, uh, Universal Resolver. Uh, I haven't, uh, uh, you know, we had demo last week and I, I ran the demo without knowing, uh, without, you know, I, I was just able to log into the D, uh, DIF uh, uh, Universal Resolver and, and do that demo. So that is one aspect of things. And I'm uh, keeping a close watch on that as well as the uh, credentials community uh, group. Uh, I do uh, also look at your indie uh, exchanges. So I, I'm trying to condense all that into this particular, as far as into this working group. As far as your uh, question about EEA, we had a couple of meetings where we had bridges to them, but we seem to have lost a little bit of momentum there. And I did uh, speak with someone yesterday who wanted to uh, talk to me about how how we can further collaborate and what the feedbacks are on the EEA because, because EEA is again, a membership only uh, organization and you can't just show up for those calls. You have to be either invited or, uh, uh, you know, have some kind of a link to that invite. The other, other, way of course is completely open and Reuven has been on several calls and we did talk about the implementation of SSI in uh, sovereign um, countries and what are the limitations and uh, whether PII should be on the ledger or off the ledger you know there were several uh, comments about that and that actually helps people who are actually working on this stuff uh, in particular um, uh, I had someone named Moshmi Chatterjee who was there on that call and she was, you know, she's working on that particular topic and uh, was helped by Ruben's comments because 
I mean, we all know that, you know, there is a proscription on putting PI on the chain, even if it's encrypted. Uh, so that what are the different ways in which we can do that? You know, anyway, without going into the particulars. Uh, yeah, please. Okay, Mr. Hughes, me. Yeah. Hey, so I wanted to point out that I'm trying something new um, with regards to async collaboration um, uh, for the CICD committee. Um, our wiki tightly integrates with JIRA and um, well, actually, before I describe it, um, I did want to call out the Sean Amundsen is a really big proponent of using the Git process for documentation. And I'm going to have to say I agree with him on this one. It solves a lot of the problems Vipin was talking about with rogue deletes and, and trying to track, you know, the, the life cycle of a, uh, of a shared document everybody's working on. I'm trying to do sort of a middle road instead of going straight to GitHub. I'm using our wiki for this. Uh, there's a private space for the CICD committee that all the committee members can see, but nobody else can see. And we have a number of documents in there we're working on. And I'm using the integration between Confluence and Jira to create tasks for people as they volunteer for things. And on the wiki side, they look like uh, tickable check, you know, checklists right, that are assigned to certain people, and those are actually linked to JIRA tasks on the JIRA, um, so that when they get checked off, they get closed on JIRA. And the, the wiki provides history for edits, collaborative editing, so we can all jump into a document on a meeting. We haven't done this yet, but I'm planning to tomorrow um, in the CSCD committee meeting, um, where we'll jump into a document, all start editing and all that stuff, and then we can, um, it all gets published to the wiki, and yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that this turns out to be a better way to um, collaborate. You know, we have the history mechanism through the wiki too. So if there's rogue deletes or whatever, we can just roll stuff back. So um, just throwing that out there for everybody. Everybody has a personal space on our wiki um, in which you can invent or invite other people in to collaborate on things. Um, and I believe you can create private spaces i'm not entirely sure what the standard um capabilities are for just normal uh community members i'll have to look at that but you i know that you have a personal space at least that can function as a private space and you can quickly set one of those up but if there's any of the working groups or anything like that that wants to you know work in private until something's ready to present um Talk to me or Ryan. We'll we'll see what we can do about setting up private spaces. I, I kind of want to avoid the proliferation of private spaces, but if that turns out to be a good way of working, um, I'm sure we'll entertain it. So I'm just trying it out on this <clears throat> to see if it works. So, um, so Dave, the your your working group is well hidden. Yes, because it's not a working group; it's a committee, and we're trying to produce a document. And we we wanted to like but avoid. It's not even. It's there's nowhere to find it. I know that it's on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> the committee knows where it is. I don't see how that's transparent and in the spirit of calculating. Hey, exactly. Stop. I mean, this is the biggest problem, right? Google Doc link is a very open way to do this. Uh, otherwise, you have to have GitHub IDs, uh, all kinds of other stuff. Uh, LFID, uh, the you know which is which is fine. I mean you know if if uh, we are come to a certain maturity in the document when we don't want people to start. So there might be a dual pronged approach. In the beginning, you leave it open, and then you start closing it off because uh, you you have the document at a certain level of maturity. Uh, the uh, Collaborative editing has been, uh, you know, has been done by us, in fact, in meeting notes, uh, specifically for the architecture working group and uh, URSA and others. Um, and we do see each other's edits, but only if you're also in edit mode. Uh, it's, it's fine. I mean, you know, all these methods do work. Mm -hmm. And, I, I, and I'm, we are in the, you know, in a maturation process. So it's good to talk about all the different alternatives as they come up and okay um, I, great so i think that I, we have kind of gotten uh starting to digress into uh document editing techniques so uh thank you for the update vipin uh one other thought is you might want to reach out to uh, julian gordon to uh, 
uh, address some of the APAC questions that you raised. Julian yes. is going to be, uh, Julian's taking some personal time off. Uh, so uh, reach out to the community architects team. Our, we have an alias for that, community-architects.org. And uh, we'll try to put you in touch with people who uh, work in Julian's office. And we'll, we'll try to make that connection for you. And I see David has his hand up. Oh, I just wanted to address what Chris's point was. Um, it, yes, we are keeping that committee private or the, the documents private, but the committee participation is still open. So if anybody's curious about what we're working on and wants to participate, um, send me an email and I'll get you all hooked up into the committee and you can come in and, and join the meetings and stuff. I, I think what I wanted to avoid was having too many chickens. I wanted to have only pigs. So anybody who wants to participate can still participate, but I wanted to eliminate like sort of the drive-by fights and stuff because we have a deadline and I wanted to keep the scope focused and um, drive forward quickly, like just gathering requirements and saying, this is what we're going to work on. This is, this is what we want to recommend. And then we'll come to the TSC for further discussion. So, but I don't know that I'm correct. If the TSC says don't make private uh, spaces on the wiki, I will follow that directive. So maybe we should bring this up for um, discussion next week. Or today, there's one other thing that time. I think is there's one other thing I think that would be important relative to the identity working group to mention the technical steering committee, which is there's an organization called the Decentralized Identity Foundation um, that uh, with the joint operating agreement organization that Microsoft has previously sponsored, moving over to the Linux Foundation, um, is kind of migrating into the Linux Foundation. That process is kind of underway, and in conjunction with that, they're looking to figure out how to open up their development process and figure out um, how to better sponsor some of their projects. Um, so there's some interesting collaboration opportunities or perhaps some competition um, in terms of the open source code engagements around decentralized identity um, that are opening up this week and next week um, in the run up to the Internet Identity Workshop. So um, if any of your organizations have been engaged with the Decentralized Identity Foundation or are involved at all in Indy and some of the other uh, SSI projects that are available, um, it might be a, a, a good time to pay some attention to what's going on over there at DIFF. All right, thanks, Nathan. Uh, Bawa? Yeah, just the one uh, suggestion on how to promote uh, the meetings for the China area. So for the TWGC, there's a, a, a mail list. So I would suggest uh, uh, if you can put the event information there in advance, there may call uh, more people to attend the meeting if they're interested. Yeah, I've, I've only been posting in the Rocket Chat channels. Uh, I, I guess I should also include the the other uh, other vectors. Yeah, I, I see that, but you know the Rocket Chat is not that uh, active. Yeah, and I have to translate many of that stuff for, anyway in order to understand what you guys are talking about. Anyway. Yeah, anyway, thanks for your effort, <laughs> Wei Ping. <laughs> no problem. And, and Bao, can you remind me what the status of Rocket Chat is in PRC? Is it accessible? Well, it, it is accessible, but uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's slow to access. And uh, yeah, you know, um, I, I see people prefer to use some mobile app like uh, the WeChat for the online chatting but they do not prefer the, the rocket chat. And uh, yeah, so I, I would suggest that the mail list is still the first way to promote the news. Okay, thanks. All right, well, that is the, the end of the official agenda for today. It looks like next week though, we're gonna have a much fuller agenda. Uh, we'll be looking forward to something hitting the mail list from Dave Hughesby today or tomorrow on project readiness. Um, so expect some discussion on that. And there will be one to two other uh, proposals. One uh, proposal has hit the mailing list for uh, transaction API. And then the ARIES proposal from Nathan, uh, I believe has not yet been mailed. And then we've got two other backlog, um, two other backlog items for uh, project engagement and the ambassadors reboot. And I don't think we have any immediate updates uh, scheduled for those.
All right. Uh, unless there's any pressing item that didn't make it onto the agenda this morning, we'll give a minute for that, uh, and then we will just uh, wrap up. Going once, going twice. All right. Thank you for everybody's time. Look forward to discussion continuing on the mail list and chat as usual, and see everybody next week. Thanks. Bye.